Welcome to Canis Bay Lake Campground, Algonquin Park. This is our happy place. Canis Bay Lake Campground is located at kilometer marker 23 on Highway 60 in Algonquin Provincial Park. It is one of 11 organized campgrounds that make up the 7,600 square kilometer park. It is on beautiful Canis Bay Lake and has close access to all the amenities that Algonquin Park has to offer. Okay, I'm back. <coughs> Look how thick this sucker is. Yeah, they always have nice ones. I like the map on the back. Yeah. So we gotta drive up here. We gotta figure out where our site is. And uh, there's no dump station or potable water fill up station here. So we're just gonna find a tap along the side of the road, as I recall from about six years ago. It's across from the comfort station from the, just uphill from the beach. Yep. Yeah. And uh, it was threaded so we can fill up yeah. there. Yeah. So let's do it. Yep. So there is no actual potable water fill up station here. So uh, let's fill up here because we know it's threaded. Attach the uh, filter right to this so that it's all filtered water through the hose. And we're just gonna cut through here and fill up on the other side. 218. What were they again? Oh, 219, weren't they? Um, let me this see. is them right here. <laughs> Cheryl just said, what Hello, number? Hello, friends, how are you? <laughs> Cheryl said, what number are they again? And I said, <laughs> I think 219. <laughs> Keep it down out there. Hey. Keep it down. We're here. This is the old grumpy nice guy. Nice setup. Nice setup. Yes, actually, and you're going to like your, your lots. Yeah? This is nice. And we saw the sun. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> So this is our campsite, site 226 in the Hydro Campground at Canis Bay Lake in Algonquin Park. It's a nice sized site, nice and flat, easy to level off when we pulled the trailer in. Uh, the fall leaves are about 50% right now. Makes it look really nice. Love the leaves on the ground. It's a beautiful site, beautiful time of year to be here. There are four camping areas in Canis Bay Lake Campground. Area one has zero electric and 52 non-electric. Area two has zero electric and 49 non-electric. I'm breathing in the last of September. I can feel the wind blow. Area three has 33 electric and 40 non-electric. Summer sky is like a giant ember. The hydro area where we are has 52 electric and zero non-electric. When the autumn leaves are playing, chasing, puts a smile up on my face. They leave their branches one by one and whirl around there. There's three comfort stations with flush toilets and showers, one in hydro, one in camping area three, and one central in the campground. There's also a comfort station with toilets and laundry facilities in the hydro area. On this trip, we're with our friends, Patty and Steve. They're over here. Hello. And this is their little pop-up. You might remember them from the uh, Cypress, Lake. Cypress. Cypress Lake video. Yeah. 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 Heading out on Canis Bay Lake. Yay, we found it. 
from the sunshine. I will share it with you. Look at that, coming in from behind me. There are 16 backcountry campsites, all within a 30 minute paddle to the main campground. We're gonna follow the path to the treasure box. And for Cheryl, it is a true treasure box. We found it. There she is. And that, my friends, is the sound of another satisfied customer. <laughs> easy peasy. That's no fun for you. You're hoping to get me to fall. Uh, I was. Well, the water's starting to get a little bit choppy. It's getting a little bit dark overhead. Uh, we're supposed to be getting a good rain this afternoon, so we better head back and see what else we can do. This is the Portage store at Canoe Lake. This is where you can get all your rentals, kayaks, canoes, paddle boards, anything like that, and they'll deliver it to any campground in Algonquin Park. Canoe Lake is also the access point to get into the many backcountry sites. There's washrooms and showers here, so when you finish your long canoe trip, you can get all cleaned up here before you hop in your car to head home. Whenever we come to Algonquin Park, we always have to stop at the Lake of Two Rivers store. It's an outfitter, has Algonquin Park gear, camping supplies, a little restaurant uh, with grill favorites, and ice cream. You usually get the ice cream. That's a big pine. That's a big pine. Now Algonquin knows how to do a visitor center right. Let's go inside and check it out.
The Visitor Center is at kilometer marker 43, and this is the best visitor center we've ever been to in any park. And this is a cool little shelter they have here. Now, it's been raining for uh, most of this trip, and they got this big, beautiful shelter. It's a clam shelter. Uh, this one's sold by Cabela's. It is a clam shelter, but yep. Cabela's put their name on it. Yep. But uh, look at this thing. This thing can be set up by one person very quickly, and uh, it is really nice in there. We've been spending some evenings in there at the rain. Remote controlled light up there, and uh, it is very quaint in there. Definitely the biggest one we've ever seen. 13 feet across, the hub style shape sheds the rain. It's fantastic, we're super pleased with it. And you just, these rain things here, you just, Take yep. these up, roll them up. Comes a screen shelter. Should we do a quick it's a one? really nice screen really shelter. Quick. Really nice. And with, with ultra fine mesh, so none of the bugs get through. Good ventilation. So, because it's hub style, it's quick in and out. Yeah, so the whole thing uh, is like that. We have a dining tent that we never use because it's a pain in the butt. Cheryl and I try to put it up. It's like, probably 15 years old. It takes like four people to put it up. Yeah. Yeah. It takes forever. Yeah. It's a pain in the butt putting up our dining shelter. And it's like 10 feet by 10 feet. This thing's way bigger. It's quick to put up. Uh, it's very nice. Camping camping equipment has come a long way. Yeah, You could get a park-sized uh, park picnic table in this, but we bought a small, off of Amazon, we bought a little small square table, which serves us well for playing cards and stuff. And, and uh, yeah. yeah. This thing's pretty cool. I really like it. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the description. This is Camper's Beach, and right next to it is the boat launch. And this is the day use beach. This is the entrance to the Minnesing Mountain Biking Trail. There's four loops in here. The smallest is 4.7 kilometers. Then there's a 10.1 kilometer, 17.1 kilometer, and 24.4 kilometers. All four are considered moderate difficulty. When I say this mountain biking trail is rated at moderate difficulty, I mean moderate difficulty for mountain bikers. For weekend hacks like us, it's pretty hardcore. At all the campgrounds in Algonquin now, if you pre-register with your vehicle license plate, when you arrive at your campground, you can completely bypass the registration desk. They no longer give you passes to put on your windshield and uh, things to put on your post. In fact, they took all the uh, little holders off all the posts because they don't do that anymore. The rangers have an app and they can scan license plates to make sure that you are registered. When you come to an area like this, which is like a picnic shelter area that you can book, again, you don't have to go and uh, reserve anywhere. You can go right here, uh, scan in the QR code, check for availability, and book it right from your phone. There's some excellent fishing in Candace Bay Lake. Lake trout and largemouth bass are very common here. Uh, a gentleman I was speaking to yesterday, uh, he was out fishing the day before. He caught a couple of lake trout in the 14 to 16 inch range. And he said, just out about three quarters of the way across here, there's a deep channel. Most of the water is about 30 feet deep, but then there's a channel that's about 60 feet deep. He had his fish finder on. He said that uh, you could see that the fish were just stacked in there. So uh, that's a hot tip for you. So let's talk a little bit about Algonquin Park and how it's laid out uh, in relation to the Highway 60 corridor, the main corridor. So, when you come into the park, you get one of these books. On the back page of the book is the entire map of Highway 60, which is the main corridor through Algonquin Park, where nine of the uh, 11 organized campgrounds are situated. Now, the way it's set up is Westgate is kilometer marker zero, and they have kilometer markers all throughout, all the way to Eastgate, which is just past kilometer marker 55. So if you wanna to go to anywhere, you look on the map, 
and you see what kilometer marker it's at, you can see the markers at the side of the road, and that's how you know how to uh, get to places. So for instance, Canis Bay Lake is just past kilometer marker 23, and we went to the uh, art center today, and that's at kilometer marker 20. So we know it's only three kilometers from Canis Bay Lake. Um, everything is on there. So the visitor center is around kilometer marker 44. And since we're at 23, we know that's 21 kilometers away. Uh, it shows all the trails, all the campgrounds. So this map is very good. Uh, make sure you grab one of these when you come into the park. You can also down one, uh, download one online. This is the Algonquin Art Center at kilometer marker 20. Broken from the start, I am nothing more than roses at the side of a busy road. How I'm crawling for a worthy goal. At least I'm not alone in my empathy. There's more like me who don't know how to be, how to reach out. I'm not allowed to film inside the art center, so you're just going to have to come here and check it out yourself. And it's a great thing to do on a rainy day. If you have an extra five or six thousand dollars hanging around, you might even be able to buy one of the paintings or sculptures in here. morning. We are back with Cole's Notes and we are at Canis Bay Algonquin Park. This is our happy place. This is our favorite place, our favorite park uh, in Ontario of all the parks that we've uh, tried so far. And that's Algonquin. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of campgrounds in Algonquin. Right now we're specifically at Canis Bay Lake. Mm -hmm. It is fall and it's beautiful here. Yeah, the colors just started popping as we arrived. They got better every day. I don't think they're full yet. I think in a few more days they'll be full. But man, some beautiful views. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of rain, but that's okay. It just makes it prettier. Yeah. Why do we love Algonquin? Well, Algonquin has such a variety of things to do. There's just so much to do here. You could spend weeks here because there's so many trails. There's so many campgrounds. There's so many lakes. Uh, that All you can put your, yeah, your yeah. canoes and kayaks in. It's incredible. Uh, there's so much to see and do when you're at this park. Wildlife is big here. There are moose, bear, all kinds of birds. Um, if you're a photographer, this is the place you want to be. 
Unfortunately, we haven't seen any moose or bears yet on this trip, but we have in previous trips. Uh, quite often, the best place to find them is just when you're driving along Highway 60, and uh, you'll see them. Uh, Early morning, evenings are yeah, more prime time. Grazing in a swampy type area. And uh, once you do spot one, uh, a lot of people will be stopping along the highway, and you see a lot of people stopping to take pictures. But uh, don't get too close because they are dangerous. And quite a few people have seen them come through the campgrounds as well. Yeah, while we've been here, we've been uh, following Instagram and people are putting it on post pictures of moose uh, all around us. But uh, we just haven't seen them on this trip yet. No. Um, if you're a beach person, this probably isn't the park for you. No. There are just tiny little beaches at each campground, but it's not big sandy beaches, which you're probably looking for. Yeah, but still, it, it is a place if you do have kids and they want to go swimming, it's a, a sandy area and it goes into uh, small pebbles when you're in the water and they are uh, buoyed off. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it keeps it pretty shallow, but it isn't, you know, it isn't sandbanks. It isn't something like that. It's, it's, this isn't about the beach. This is about nature and hiking and beautiful scenery. Mm -hmm. um, before coming into Algonquin Park, you might want to fill up your tank either in Huntsville, that's coming from the West Gate, or in Whitney coming from the East Gate, because there's, I don't think there's any place to get gas within the park itself, and it's a 60 kilometer stretch. So yeah. when you're driving from here to go hiking back and forth, you use up a lot in your tank, so. Yeah, that's true. To, so it's nice to have a full tank, because mm -hmm. uh, everything you want to do here, uh, there's a, a bit of a travel if you want to go to the visitor center or the logging museum or even the dump station. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one thing we haven't really mentioned is the dump station. Uh, there's two trailer dump stations, uh, one near Pog um, on Highway 60 and one in Rock Lake. And they're both closer to the east gate. Mm -hmm. um, we're closer to the west gate and we leave going west from here. So it's a bit of a drive to get to the dump station and come back. It's like 20 minutes to get there and 20 minutes to get back just uh, to dump. So what we're doing keep is... Keep your park pass. Yeah, keep your park pass. Actually, when you, when you uh, register at the park now, you don't get any paper pass. And uh, we talked about that earlier in the video. You don't get a paper pass anymore, but you can ask for a paper pass, and I did, so that I have one, uh, a vehicle pass, so that uh, on our way out, we're going to be passing right by Arrowhead Provincial Park. So we have our vehicle pass, and we can just drive right into Arrowhead, and we can dump there. And you can do any park if you still have your day pass. Right. That way we're not taking uh, <laughs> half an hour out of our time just to go to the uh, trailer dump station. Yeah, it's rather small, and it's difficult to once you're in line at the dump station, you can't really get out. You're stuck. So you could be there for a couple hours. Yeah, I don't know if Algonquin has any plans on, on improving it. Uh, there's a likelihood that they don't because they want to keep this more rugged and more into uh, tenters rather than big RVs. This isn't an RV resort. This is, this is about nature. Uh -huh. So, that being said. Yeah, a rating. I would say, in my opinion, this is the number one park we've been to this year. Uh -huh. And it would be just as nice, if not better, in the summertime, too. Uh, this, is, this is a great park. And I think the highest we've rated a park this, uh, uh, this season is a nine. And this so. has to beat that by a little bit. So I'd say this is it. This is the rating. Okay. This is it. Yeah. Nine and a quarter. Yeah, we're just giving it a little bit more. It's just a little bit better than the rest. Um, this is, this is our kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We're nearing the end of our season. Uh, we have one more park to go to, mm -hmm. and that is Earl Rowe Provincial Park. We're going there for Thanksgiving, uh, and we're going to have our family there Hopefully. and a couple other families there uh, doing our big traditional Thanksgiving dinner there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope you join us.